Hello everyone and welcome to another No Rest for the Wicked guide. In this video, I'm going to break down all the ways that you can advance your character and the City of Sacrament and give you some useful tips and tricks along the way. Being that this is an early access game, lots of these things are going to change and I'll be sure to cover all of those changes for you guys in future videos. So if you happen to be watching this video well into the future, um, be sure to check the player guides playlist here on the channel so that way you're always working from the latest and greatest information. But let's not waste any time and let's just get into it. Please feel free to obviously use the chapter markers in this video to jump to any area that interests you the most. But first, we really need to talk about inventory management. We're going to follow this up with all the ways to upgrade, enchant, and enhance your gear and your build. And finally, we're going to talk about sacrament. But now inventory management exists in three pillars for you, the player. First, you have your community stash. This is a chest in the rookery that once you unlock, you'll get access first things first in the city. Then eventually you'll have player housing chests. This is a uh, lock obviously when you unlock housing. And honestly, I would highly recommend doing this and taking part in the housing system. Finally, you have your personal player inventory. This is where you can store various different items in different areas. The devs have hinted at a lot of big changes coming to the player inventory. So be sure to keep it locked here for more No Rest for the Wicked guides and news. But beyond that, the community stash personally is actually kind of limited. But if you're rolling on different characters and you want to share things between them, this is really where you want to put those kind of items. It can serve as kind of a breakpoint or kind of a holding pattern uh, for the short term until you get player housing. But player housing is really where you want to uh, put your effort in because it's way more flexible. You can buy various different chests and cupboards to store your items in. And a large cupboard at this time will store up to 30 consumables, but no gear. And for the, the largest chest we have at the moment, uh, medium chest will store up to 20 items of your choice. And you can place as many as you want in your house and we've seen many players do that it just ends up becoming a game of organization and the reason why if you knock this idea out of the park right out the start all the gameplay loops and gear grinds will become much much more simple now the third pillar of upgrading your player inventory is based off of a plague icor you get these items from big bosses uh, and you have the opportunity to go each and every week and hunt some down in the open world uh, along with playing through the story you're going to get some there as well so use this feel free to upgrade it on whatever category you feel it needs the most. Personally, I went with more of the items that drop as opposed to gear, but as I unlock more, more gear slots will become available, which will increase the amount of time that I can kind of do my run, my gameplay loop, which we'll cover later in this video. Okay, so let's talk gear. In No Rest for the Wicked, gear comes in four different categories and multiple tiers. First and foremost, let's go over the categories. You have common. This is going to be your most flexible type of item. You can also enchant common items as well and have an idea of getting a rare or you can get something that is called cursed. So in the case of the next level up is rare. These are going to offer various different buffs to your character. Look at these perks and you can kind of try and decide what ultimately you want to grab. However, from there, you also have the risk or benefit of getting a cursed item. A cursed item means that you get some really substantial benefits from the item itself, but you also get a disadvantage and they can vary for a wide range of different things. Like in this example, gain health and lose focus. Or you can see that you've got items that will give you experience loss on damage taken or death, etc. So you can kind of choose and pick and choose what ultimately makes the most sense for you. The fourth category is legendary. These are curated builds uh, with varying different uh, perks and these drop from obviously different uh, bosses and there's a wide range of them that can really truly change how you play your character. There's a pretty simple ingenious gameplay loop here at play when it comes to setting up your build. It really kicks off with running the crucible to get gear. Then you want to go to Eleanor and you want to either enchant or infuse said gear and sell what you don't want or keep. If you can see here, I can go into the enchant menu and it's going to cost you one silver to enchant a piece of gear. I'm going to go ahead and take the cost and spend the money and see what I come up with. 
So once a piece of gear is enchanted, you can still do a few other things. You can infuse that gear with various different runes and objects that you find in the open world. And now if we take a look at said gear, you can see here the various different effects that I get, Sacrament Guardians, Focus Gain, Healing Effects, Experience Gain Decreased. Then you can see here Equipment Load Decrease. So I got two Cursed and I did get a Rare, which is this in this case is gonna gain 9% health on kill and do six electric damage. Now, I might not want this. And you can see here it did cost one silver, uh, to get it and what I would do at this point for the items that I don't actually want or need I'll go ahead and just immediately sell them right back uh, to her Because I'm not going to use those I'm hunting specific perks and traits namely uh, Health on uh, damage dealt and more so that is essentially kind of what I'm looking for You can have obviously different perks that you're hunting as well Now if you're not sure about a specific perk or weapon and you think you might want to play with it This is where player housing and your stash come into play to be able to hold on to certain items To decide if you really want to keep them in the long run uh, Ultimately though if you find yourself short on cash because upgrading uh, and enchanting gear is one silver uh, Feel free to obviously uh, get back into that gameplay and grind loop. All right, so now let's let's talk about infusing this gives you the ability to take any of your gear that has open gym slots and increase it with any of the various different uh, gyms that you find out in the open world now this is going to be something that it will have to be by preference as to what you're looking for like if you want to reduce the item's weight if you want to increase its armor gain experience lose experience opportunities focus increase as well so you can choose to increase your gear uh, this way and enhance it with these various different gems and it's going to do different things depending on what type of uh, item it is now with the infuse system you might be asking yourself what do all of these gems actually do where should i slot them in to my build because based off of some of the gems they'll actually have a different effect based off of the position that you put them in for example your weapon or your shield your gloves chest they all have varying different effects so let's jump into it we'll start obviously off with the chip diamond uh, this is just going to give you more experience or experience loss on death that's going to be the risk reward that you have with the diamonds tiny feathers are going to reduce the item's weight it doesn't matter what position you put them in it's just going to work across everything then you'll notice that all of the you know gems are called chipped so we can expect that we're going to see higher versions of these gems at some point but also more gems in the future because the perks that they all offer aren't necessarily all in the game straight away so that's something to look forward to the chipped amethyst and forgive my uh, pronunciation of, of some of these we'll do our best weapon is going to give you and it deals an increased extra uh, plague damage shield will deal plague damage on block helm will deal plague damage on backstab chest is going to deal plague damage on damage taken legs plagues resistance is going to be increased or if you put it in the glove slot it's going to deal 5 to 15 plague damage on parry now for the sapphire for the weapon it's going to deal an extra amount of cold damage shield is going to deal cold damage on block helm is going to increase the potency of cold we'll see uh, cold resistance is going to be increased if you put it in the chest or in the legs and then finally gloves is going to deal gold damage on parry so you start to see a pattern clearly emerging uh, ruby is going to give you heat damage it's going to deal heat damage on block for your shield uh, it's going to increase your uh, healing effects uh, for your helm if you slot it into the chest uh, this should be a you know a health increase for you for the legs heat resistance is going to be increased and gloves is going to gain uh, health on parry for the emerald you're going to put it in the weapon if you want stamina on damage dealt for the shield stamina on blocked attacks helm is going to be a uh, stamina cost is decreased for the chest it's going to increase your stamina overall legs regeneration for uh the stamina slot and for your gloves it's going to refill on parry if you have a bloodstone if you put it in the weapon it's going to be health on kill shield is going to give you health on block Helm is going to increase your overall healing effects. The chest is going to increase your overall health. Uh, you're going to, if you put in the legs, you're going to get health on uh, focus use. And then gloves is going to be health on parry. For the quartz, you're going to have a weapon that's going to deal extra electric damage. Shield is going to deal extra uh, electric damage on block. Helm, focus regeneration. Chest is going to be focused, uh, increased in this case. Legs is going to be electric resistance. And gloves is going to deal electric damage on parry. And then 
here we have a couple of others. You have the chip shield emblem. Uh, this is going to increase your durability uh, if you put it in the weapon. And then any armor or shield piece is just going to overall increase your armor. For the chipped spike, if you uh, put this in your weapon, it's going to increase your damage overall. For shield, it's going to damage on block. For gloves, it's going to damage on parry. And chest, it's going to deal damage on damage taken. And then finally, for the chip topaz, uh, this is going to give you, for the weapon, focus on damage dealt. For your shield, focus in on block attacks. For your helm, focus gain increased overall. The chest focus is going to be increased overall. And then the legs, you're going to get focus on focus use. And then gloves, focus on parry. But now let's go ahead and move into the rune system. You have runes and slots. These are your skills in your inventory. As you find these weapons, you might want to go and just extract the runes out of them before selling, so that that way you can end up having some customization towards your different builds. It is important to note that different weapons will use different runes. So you can kind of inspect, you can see exactly what items and runes do, which and whatnot. And it will tell you where and what weapons these things will work on. So just kind of keep that in mind as you collect your different runes. The second part of the gameplay loop is that after you've done your crucible runs and kind of played around with your gear, you're going to want to go back into the open world and do something very similar with going into the older zones or even the nameless pass to explore and to hunt. And what you're actually looking for is a part of not just getting gear, resources and materials like copper, pine, iron, spruce and, and clay. Uh, those things are going to be gathered and should be gathered alongside of kind of this gameplay loop because that's going to jump well into our third section uh, you'll see here the fallen embers are the key element so that you can do the crucible so you run the crucible to get the best possible gear in that tier three category and then what you do is you run the open world for resources and more and so as long as you're kind of doing that you're going to find that you're going to have wet, lots of opportunities to enhance your character in any different respect from your inventory from your perks from your power all at play now the third thing is is that as you've been doing that gathering and getting those items you can actually upgrade your items you can also take your materials and refine them at the different vendors we're going to go through the uh town upgrade system here in a little bit but here i am and i'm going to go select upgrade and now what i can do is i can choose to invest in my different items here now what's important is that you can see here some of these items like this can be upgraded but it needs iron ingots i only have one you can just left bumper over into them right now and purchase them in a future update the ability to straight up purchase the the ingot will be going away and you'll have to do more refining aspects and that is a, a change that will be coming later down the road but i can go ahead and buy that upgrade item and then i can jump in here and i can go ahead and upgrade my gear which is going to increase its defense it's going to give it some extra oomph uh, and you can see here those different requirements are being applied now some items are going to take a lot of effort in this case i need two bear paws i need uh, to find those in the world so that i can upgrade this weapon into a tier three weapon because once you see here as the uh, little bar blue bar fills up once you fill it up and then the next tier it will tear itself up making it even more powerful and this is one of the main reasons why it's important to be upgrading your town and the different vendors is because it gives you the opportunity to use the different crafting stations and make the different mats for with the raw materials as you find them with all my gear upgraded i then jump back into another gameplay loop of crucible enchantment open world and upgrades. Finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about upgrading your city, upgrading the city of Sacrament. Doing so is going to have beneficial effects to your player in the long run. It's gonna give you access to better resources. It's gonna give you access to better refineries. It's going to give you better access to the gameplay loop that we just covered. But when it comes to upgrading it, this is gonna be the biggest tip that I can give you because as you go and uh, check the various different town projects, you can actually take the items you have and set them 
into the Davos so that he is holding on to them. It's going to save you inventory space, and this is especially critical at the early part of the game. But you want to run around, you're going to be doing the open world content anyway. So you want to keep an eye out for any tree, any ore mine, or any dirt pile, because those are going to be the key items to upgrading this city. And doing those things and then turning them in, not having to worry about them being a part of your inventory, just keep investing in the town with every loop, even if you haven't reached a point where it's going to complete. Now, once it does complete, it's just going to be a little bit of time, but you can see going from an early phase of not really having a shop, building in the shop, you get access to way more opportunities within the game. And I highly encourage it. And as the game evolves, these, these systems are going to evolve too. So with that, I really hope that you guys got something good out of this video. If you like it and you want to support the channel for free, be sure to hit that like button. If you want to go above and beyond, check the links in the description. We do offer channel memberships here with lots of different perks and the members are truly what keep the lights on here at the channel. So I thank you guys so much for your support. If you guys feel like I earned your sub, uh, sound off in the comments below. Let me know. And I'd love to welcome you to the channel. Uh, I, I want to earn your sub first and foremost. So if it is the video that gets you to hit that subscribe button, I really would love to thank you. Uh, and I might thank you guys obviously in future videos. But with all that being said, I wish you guys all the very best. Can, I hope you to con continue to enjoy your time with No Rest for the Wicked. And I'm going to continue to cover this game to the best of my abilities. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. But until then, take care. Thank you.